didn't change my camera setting, but that's all right. We are live, guys. Live, footloose, fancy free, I think. Let me zoom in here a little. Come here, DM webcam. Configure video. Might be helpful. Zoom in, put my pretty little mug. Everybody can see. All righty, I think we're all... Well, nope, it's delaying just a little. Hey, do I want to do that? There we go. Okay. Linda, are you back? Uh-oh. Got him. Okay, good. All right, well, we are here for our Tuesday night session of D&D &D Dungeon of the Mad Mage. Down a couple of players, but hey. I haven't played in a week, over almost uh, two weeks, so couldn't let that happen. We'll get sh we're going to get Shadow in here. He's joining us late. He had personal activities to attend to. Unfortunately, Karen could not make it, but I do need to check. I'll post in there if everybody's available next week. I'm I'm a fifty fifty right now whether I'm going to play or not. So I just figured may take the end of week off, the year off, put twenty twenty to bed. You know, uh, let's see. Let's do our introductions with those who are here. And then, uh oh, what happened to Discord over here? Oh, really? Wi Fi? Really? You just had to go bonkers. Uh, Flennial, introduce yourself and Karen, and uh, let's get started. All righty. So I am Flennial, the 14th level Wood Elf Druid. And I am also running Kieran again tonight since he is AWOL. He is a 14th level high elf fighter wizard late singer. That's right. Uh, Linder. Hi, everyone. I'm playing Linder Balstina. I'm a 14th level half elf bard wizard. And Quetzal. I am Quetzal, a 14th level fighter paladin wizard folk. Turn your mic up a little bit, sir, or put your face closer to your mic. You were really quiet. But he's quite a little quiet, so it's kind of apropos. Just and as good. It's true. And like I said, Remission Shadow, Robert will be here. He and his family uh, stuff going on tonight and would be running late. But he will join us once he uh, is finished with that. His priorities, which apparently aren't D&D &D tonight. Uh, okay. Um you guys are down in the Arcturia Doom. You're uh, messing with the level that's full of transmutation and just hijinks everywhere after you've been dealing with uh, a flump, which was a new creature to run into. You've. Um, what's up, Reggae? Good to see you. Uh, you uh, have also dealt with a rock shasha. You have found a. Apparently a lich's phylactery and some spell books. Um, what else has gone on in here? You have found several mutations of things. And then in the rooms y'all are currently in, um, you have found things that aren't actually, actually what they appear to be and that, that they transform after you after encounter them or they touch them. Scorpion? It turned into... It was... Um, um, an umber hope. Uh, umber hope, right. Yeah, that one. Mm hmm And you also had some um, um, rusty swords that turned into an armor. The animated armor, basically. Um, so, yeah. And then in the um, uh, middle of the room below, to all the south, was, um, it was looked like it was like a study area. Uh, some chalkboards, a table, some scribblings of stuff. And... Um, yeah, uh, that's kind of where we left off uh, as the group is still trying to just flesh out the rest of this area, even though you've been shown um, through the double doors down to the south um, the way to head down down to the next level. Um, and you're just, I guess, exploring. So they're really XP hunting is what this this group does. Um, but yeah. So how else would they level? Uh, hey, I'm just I'm just reporting how things go, um, you know. So uh, if we just if we got down a level and just snuck through it, and went down another level, would you give us all the XP for that level? Uh, no, not hardly, not at all. 
This is how I to love <laughs> You know, it's a thought. You know, it's a well-placed thought. But... Ne- negatory. Anyway, all right. So we're trying to sojourn through this as best as possible, even though we are a couple down. Normally, I would pull the plug on it, but knowing that Robert uh, is going to make it uh, and the grief that I would have gotten from the other three had I called the game, um, we will play. Um, so, that being said, um, yeah, that's right. Uh, what are we doing? Well, I guess our lead since Shadow is um, AWOL also. Well, he would normally stick close to you. Yeah, but he normally goes first, yeah. does all the listening and yeah, stuff he, like that. Yeah. So you can move him up there also, and he can listen at the doors and check for traps and blow himself up and that sort of thing. He's got his ball of yarn. He's kind of engrossed with that right now. Uh, he will listen to which door, the left or the right? Uh, let's go left, since he's on that side. All right, he'll go over here, and he will... What have we got? Let's shut down the scribblings. We don't need that. Um, he, where is his deal? Let's, why do I even have to worry about rolling his perceptions plus 13? Is that not even with a one? Because he could roll a one. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, that's not a critical failure or anything like that. So uh, he hears um, he, uh, some hissing growling on the other side of that door. Could be a mimic if it's already end. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah, so they have to find a mimic because they have been they have figured out from the legend lore spell that. The religious phylactery, this particular one, can only be destroyed by sitting in the stomach of a mimic for three days. And so they're hot on the trail of a, trying to find a mimic. So <laughs> forgot all about that. Okay. Um, yeah, he hears some hissing growling on the other side of that door. Right. He would probably check for traps. And do we really want to open the door? He doesn't think so. Yeah, here's the exact opposite. Um, is it roll a one? He rolls almost a 20. And be, he well, just, he's supposed to look for traps, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He he doesn't think there's any traps there. <laughs> He's pretty damn certain. Oh, he says, well, you go right ahead. Fine. I'll open the door. I'm going to hold him into a firebolt. That's right. We lock the tokens. Make sure they don't do anything funny. Uh, okay, Duff, would you uh, unlock the map so you can open up the room? Okay, so you open up the room, and you see what is uh, a very um, um, trash, basically gunk full slimy room and all that. It's kind of, there's the smell of rot meat is in here. You see bones on the floor. You see um, splatter marks everywhere because sitting in the room right here in the square looking at you is a giant two-headed rat and it is gnawing on something out of the corner of its mouth and you basically see um in the center in the ceiling near the north wall right about right kind of almost right above it just really if we were to say like right here um, there is a little rectangular opening about 12 inches long, six inches wide, um, that just, uh, leaks, he's kind of slime dripping out of the top of it and he's eating. Yeah. This rat is chomping on something, chomping on a slab of meat. So I will use my staff to cast speak with um actually um I'll try 
animal friendship first. Uh, I don't know if it's an animal, but I'll try it. It is not an. It is not a beast anymore. So, did he notice that? You would. You you could tell. You could tell that there's something definitely different about what you're looking at here. It is. Well, it is a monstrosity so. of some cre- creation. I, I did cast a spell. Did he notice it? And does he react? Uh, he cast a spell. Um, would he react the way you want to? Uh, you get to utter madness. I wasn't asking if how he. I'm just wondering if he uh, takes offense to me casting a spell at him and attacks or anything like that, or if he just keeps eating. He is the heads are one. It they're kind of gnawing on the same piece of meat. Both eye the eyes are looking at y'all. There's no doubt about that. Um, but it is it, you know you're just seeing that there's you know there's no sanity behind those eyes. Um, but they do see you. Um, I don't know. This thing seems like it's crazy and it's a monstrosity. Um, I think you guys do you think think we should kill it or leave it alone? I'm not sure. I mean, he hasn't attacked us. He hasn't done anything to us, so I don't necessarily know if we need to kill it, but um, it doesn't seem right. Yeah, I'm not sure about this thing. Who knows what that goop's doing? Yeah, well, y'all are sitting as y'all are chatting, all, and then you hear this bam, 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 bam. And then all of a sudden, right out of the, through the hole in the ceiling, little squirrel, this basically looks like a block of pink, rotted meat just goes, <laughs> hits the ground. Uh, right in front of it, and they just the both heads just you know immediately move toward it, and each they you know snap a, an end you know an opposite ends from each other and are gnawing on this thing, just chewing it up, you know more just pink fleck flying everywhere. Now it's just a two-headed rat creature, giant two-headed rat creature. And there's hmm, gross. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it just I will uh, step over here. Yep. See if you ask me to be in the same room. Uh, yeah, you'll have to roll me initiative now. <laughs> it smells a different kind of meat. I was holding on to that fireball since he opened the door. Or that firebolt, I should say. What do you mean? I'm not sure what you... I was, I was waiting for him to initiate combat. I have a rat. Okay, if you want to shoot it. If you're cruel. Cruel. Well, we're uh, clearly taking... Aggressive stances or something. <laughs> Apparently, the druid is going to kill this monstrosity. He cannot stand it. All right, well, boom. You're up first. <laughs> okay. Cuts both heads off, one fell swoop. <laughs> Blunt object, no less. Uh well, bam bam. You brain it. It's gone. You killed it. Brained it, shocked it, and burned it all at the same time. I hope you're proud of yourself, sir. Extraordinarily. <laughs> okay. You killed the two-headed rodent. Okay, uh, let's look around the room and see if there's anything else. Of interest there's in nothing. There. Other than slimy walls and extra yeah, where it seem- defecates and this what's left of some type of meat substance that it's gnawing seem to on. Just be holding holding chambers. All right, have a shadow listen at this door and take it for traps. Oh, whatever. Um. 
let's see. He is, uh, yeah, he's, there's nothing on either one of these doors. All right. So he opens it up. All righty, whatever. There is a, um, this room contains in this area right here, what looks to be the remains of a smashed statue. Remains of a, uh, wait a second. Oh, okay. I apologize. A smashed statue of which a deep gnome, very fat deep gnome, is eating. You see in his hand, he's got a little, you know, um, a pick. And he's been hacking, he's hacking at what looks to be his, it was, you see like the, the base of the statue looks like dwarven boots and all that. And he's just hacking um, at the, with this war pick, he uh, hacks off a piece of the stone and then he puts it in his mouth and he chomps on it. And he sees y'all open the door and he just kind of looks at the two of y'all and says, leave it alone, I'm eating. Shut the door. I'll step inside. I said, leave me alone. I, I feel I must ask, why are you eating a statue? I'm hungry, dipshit. Leave me alone. Surely there are better things to eat than stone. Have you got wax in your ears? I'm hungry. Just leave me alone so I can finish my meal in peace. Oh, oh, he, he slaps, he gets another whack, breaks off a chunk, big size one. He's just like sticking in his mouth, arr, 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 crunching, slowly biting off pieces of stone. Hey, Linder, come here. Oh, why? There seems to be something really off about this. Um, to my knowledge, gnomes don't eat stone. And this guy is aggressively mm -hmm. eating a statue, and it mm -hmm. seems really weird to me. Kind of looks like this one does. I mean, can I do like an insight check or something to try to figure out why he's doing this? Because I'm hungry. Yeah, but why stone? Because it tastes good. And you can't have any. Convincing. And he grabs the pieces he got on the floor right next to you, and he pulls them back. Mine. Go find your own statue. We don't want I to hope eat I give you some food that's actually really good, and it's not stone. That sounds gross. I like this statue. Okay. Tastes like mom's cooking. Tom, 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 tom. Uh, can Please you just leave me alone. Is there something going on with him? Shatter just backs away. I have seen it all. Have you ever met a normal deep gnome before? Maybe. He's that doesn't sound very convincing either. A hand falls off. You know, he breaks his arm. A hand falls off, and it kind of rolls away from. Hey, come here! The finger licking good, and as he suckles on the fingers and chop, 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 breaks off one in his mouth. Hey, you seen a mimic around here? No. Now leave me alone. I'm hungry. I'm eating. I'm no longer interested. <laughs> Good. Now take your friends with you. Leave me alone. Shut the door. I will cast detect magic. 
Um, you gonna stand there for ten minutes, or are you gonna use the slot? <laughs> <laughs> um, there's the there's well, you detect magic in this whole room, but as far as what you're detecting, it doesn't it does not give anything to me. So it is amb- amb- ambiguous at best. Uh, what school of magic am I detecting? I can't. I have no idea, Brian. Actually, so everything about this whole area is transmutation, no doubt about that. Um, but what's affecting? Matt, there's magic in the room, but it's um, it, it's and there's something on him, but it doesn't tell me what actually. Would you believe? So there's something affecting. Hey, I him. bet no you shadow that. would. I bet you shadow would uh, true sight him. Shadow looks cool. over. Okay, he comes over and looks. Yeah, it looks like a deep gnome eating some rock. All right, was well, that <laughs> Yep. I will give you, you know, casting in and all that, that you do detect some type of magical effect. All right, I'm going to dispel magic on you. Okay. Uh, but, um, hold on. There's a, why am I giving a DC on this then? Um, where you spell higher, making an ability check using your spell casting ability. Oh, okay. So yeah. So you got, um, you're, I did not know that. I didn't catch that. Oh, nicely. Well, that's what you needed. So good call. Uh, okay. Well, Brian, right. Not bad. So you cast this on him and all of a sudden he, he's like in the middle of getting ready to eat off another finger from his hand. And you see his eyes kind of blink rapidly for a second. And you see like clear his total expression changed. And he's like, <coughs> you see him coughing out pieces of brit you know the statue and all that and then i'll say oh 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 oh, oh, this is gonna be big and he hacks up two diamonds right in the middle of the floor (laughs) big ones (laughs) and he's gonna look at y'all and he's like wow (laughs) where those come from and he just Uh, kind of yeah and he just kind of he leeches down and he kind of grabs them and they're just covered with bile and gunk and he kind of wipes them off on his shirts and all that. And he just kind of rolls them over to your feet and he says, here, thanks for saving me. I, uh, I, I, I don't know what that all was about, but I couldn't stop eating the damn stone. It was all I ever wanted. But I don't want any more. <laughs> it seemed a bit off. I don't know if your being in this room has the effect, but you may want to get out of here. Uh, no, I, I, th- I think the, the someone cast it on me. I was traveling in the underdark and, oh, uh, just, uh, all of a sudden darkness went over me and I found myself here. And all I wanted to do was eat this stone statue. And all of a sudden a pick appeared in front of me and I hacked at it and started to eat it. Oh my God, I don't feel good, but, those two diamonds are, they're yours. Take them. I just want to go home. Can you point me in the direction to get out of here? Um, sure. Here, and he'll give you, uh, you now have, uh, two huge diamonds. <laughs> two huge diamonds. Yeah, and you all give you the XP for that. Five, yeah. five, go yeah, eat. Yeah, each. <laughs> yep. I'm going to put more of those in my inventory. All right. Well, he thanks you very much. And he gets up and he, he looks at the pick. He looks at the statue. just throws it on the ground. And he goes, God, I just want to go home. I don't even know how long I've been here. I still have the detect magic up. Are those diamonds magic if I have chance? Nope. They're regular I, old I diamonds. Have a- I have a cure and do press the digitation to clean the vomit off of them. Yeah, he did. He did a somewhat, somewhat job, but not good enough. Yeah, Karen, Fwing. Nice shiny. I like it. 
Oh, all right. Um, okay. I point him towards the uh, the do not pass hallway over there, and assuming that's not taking back to yeah. Name's Guffa. Appreciate it. Hope never see you again. Guys, I'm just gonna go home. And Enjoy. Just, Take care. He disappears. <laughs> Okay, bye. Uh, nice to done. I'll unlock tokens. You can uh, freely move back to this room. All righty. Well, let's go eat. Okay. You go east. You shall see to the north. And as you hear the gnome running down the hallway that way, Thou shall not pass. He actually went this way. And you see a hallway with the door. And another hallway with the door. And then... Aha! I bet they were thinking. Alrighty. Um... Shadow will listen. He hears nothing. Shadow will test the door. He finds nothing. He says, enjoy. Okay, I will open the door. All right. You open said door. Uh, what you see in this room is there is a wooden desk in the northeast corner. Uh, slumped in a high back chair behind the desk you can see is a skeleton clad in what looks to be perforated black robes. Um, along the south wall is a moldy quilt draped over a stone bayer. 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 Um, that's it. Okay. Um, I will cautiously make my way over to the disc. You look and you can see what looks like to be a human skeleton inside the robes. Been dead Quaid for a long long time. You think of interest on the disc? Um, looks like old paper that's basically molded uh, and rotted, and nothing. You can't discern any of the writing on it or anything like that. Nothing but paper. Paper, yeah, on the desk, yep. Spell book is there. What well, looks like to have been a spell book, but it's been charred. It's got holes in it. It's uh, totally useless now. Beyond recognition. Pretty much, yeah. Okay, um, I will go around the desk and, uh, and check out the skeleton and his perforated robes. Uh, you, uh, outside of the skeleton... Um, having a few char marks on his bones um, that you look to see uh, look like magic missile burns on them. Uh, you find a U-shaped key made of mithril, a flat six oh, nice. long flat piece of mithril in the shape of a U. Alrighty. And it is in the party sheet. And that is all you find on them. Alrighty. Um, whoop. So I will um, search the desk more thoroughly and see if there's any kind of secret. You don't find anything. You don't. You don't. Okay. No. no. All right, then go down to the beer and check that out. Quilt, actually, you try to move it and it just kind of falls apart and onto the ground. Nothing there. Empty. Nothing else in the room? Nothing else in the room. You want to send Shadow down here to start prodding this door? All right, whatever. I'm, like, I'm pretty sure this hallway goes back around to where we were, and I'm going to peek the corner. Same thing, he opens it up, doesn't find anything. The room is exactly the same as the other one up there. Another desk, high back chair. Doesn't look like the desk, anybody's been here. Another quilt over the bear. It's, you know, rotted out. 
Uh, there's, there's looks like nothing's been nothing. Nobody and nothing has been in this room for a long time. I will search the beer again. Yeah, nothing. You go through the same setup. Looks, like it's an exact identical, you know, room. But that's nothing there at all. Unfortunately, T tis empty. I don't feel like there's a room in that center spot right next to us. You might be right. It might be secrets time. Somebody's got, or Shadow's got Wanda secrets, right? Yeah, let's come over here. And, uh, yep. Hey, so, uh, first of all, I'll search and see if I can find the uh, secret door there. Put it rolling in the tower. Sorry, I didn't do a tower. Let me roll the tower. Same. Oh, no, actually, that was a little bit better. You don't detect anything. Is my detect magic still going? Sure. Anything? Nope. All right. Um, let's have Shadow come up against this wall and use his wand of secrets right up against that yeah. corner. Yeah, he be up, whips it out professionally and flying, and uh, he gets no ping. Nothing. Okay. Worth a shot. It was. Should we try this left door or do we want to go down that hallway? Oh, we're right here. We might as well check it out. All right. Let's check out this one. All righty. Uh, he listens to the door and hears some strange clicking noises behind it somewhere. All righty. He'll probably check for traps. He will check for traps and he finds none. All righty. Um, I suppose he doesn't want to open the door. You be my Quetzal, guest. Quetzal, are you coming? Quetzal. All right, I will open the door. Uh, all right, you open the door and you will see what looks to be kind of like an a um, doo -doo -doo, oval shaped little room here, and standing in the center of the room making this clicking noises uh, is this big creature that uh, we've seen something with that token before. Yeah. The same thing. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's the hook horror. Yeah. Just kind of standing there, you know, and uh, um, you see the, there's bookshelves lining the curved areas of the wall and there's just but jars smashed all over the ground too with formaldehyde on the ground. And there's, looks like there's pieces of body parts, you know, hands, arms, legs, heads, fingers, toes, Lovely. all just smashed on the ground. And it is, and it's just, you know, swiping stuff, hitting the ground. I don't even know. Doesn't even notice y'all or have opened the door. Yeah, I'm very curious about this room and what's in here. So I think we're going to go in. I think I'm going to go in anyway. Once again, I'm going to hold on to a firebolt just in case things get aggressive. 
Does it notice? Yeah. You? Does, yeah. Am does I? It, um, does it notice you? You're stepping. You're. You're kind of. Um, it's. You see what looks to be moth wings, beetle shells. Now there's. <sighs> Troglodyte claws, ichorge. Is my blue. detect magic my detect magic picking up anything in here? Nope. And this creature's just this got his back to you right now as he's kind of moving along, smashing things. All right. Um. Let's see. What am I going to do? All right. I am going to uh, sneak right up behind him and attack him from behind. You're mean. Yeah, I am. All right, give him some damage. Raw initiative. Oh, well, he won't last long with a three. <laughs> Shadow's just going to go, y'all get a hold of this. I'll just go down here and keep it a lookout. <laughs> Shadow sees the doors. Shadow sees the hallway. Quetzal. It's like you don't know what it is. It's a hook horror. Hook horror. Holy moly, Quetzal, a two. You know what? I did not actually drop the damage on that guy because I didn't have him targeted. Yeah. Quetzal, I think you need a nap. Millennial. I'm assuming I no longer have advantage on him, right? Yeah, he's turned. Yeah, oh yeah, that's yes, yes sir. Yeah, yeah, he has, he has, he's figured out you're there. All righty, that's it for me. So Kieran will come in, and he will do something. And you kill him. And when you do, a hobgoblin basically. He turns back into a hobgoblin? Into a hobgoblin, yeah. Do I need to kill you too? Yeah, he's, yeah, he, yeah, you see rage in his eyes as he's sitting there and he has his long sword drawn out. Yep. He swings. So does, does he recover himself or does he attack? Yeah, oh, he's recover. Oh, yeah, yeah, he, he st stands up and swings at you and misses. Quite angry. I'm going to re-roll that. Just a bit outside. Wow, that's rough. <laughs> wow. All right. Well, it didn't cost me a spell slot, so whatever. Quetzal. Let's try this new sword. All right. Can you hit something tonight? I don't know. There's a so. hit. There's a Apparently hit. so. Finally. You're going to target something? Uh, I thought I did target him. 
No, he, he poly he changed. He was a polymorph. He he'd been changed. Into That's what it was. Yeah. You should give him the damage. Yeah, you <laughs> yeah you cut him in half. Okay. Do you feel better? Uh, I didn't really want to kill the hobgoblin. I just wanted to kill the hook horror. I wasn't really expecting the change, but now that he's gone, I want to search his room thoroughly and see if we can find anything interesting. Nope. No. There's nothing in the room except all the stuff that's broken and stuff that's still laying on the shelves. Um, yeah. He's destroyed everything in this room. But yeah, um, it's what it was trapped in this room, swept off the bottles of the shelf, spilling the contents everywhere. Okay, so they're going to this door now. Shadow. Second. All right, get rid of that. Let's see. Let me see. What do we got here? Um. Doesn't it here in a C do 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 do. Um, no, I didn't detect anything my um, lock wise and he doesn't detect any traps so he opens up the room I open the door yep Open up the room. And what you're going to see is there are four pillars um, rise up to about a 20 foot high ceiling. There's an iron ring about 20 feet in diameter suspended from iron brackets fixed to the tops of the pillars so that it hangs parallel to the floor. Uh, nestled inside the ring is a, a circular iron disc that's slightly, slightly smaller diameter um, with uh, something etched on either side of this disc. Uh, directly above the ring and the disc is a base, you know, um, there's the floor and the ceiling above has got a concavity to it, about a 10 foot concavity on the floor and the, and the ceiling above. There are two statues nestled in each alcove. They are life-size statues of look-to-be robed wizards. Can't see their um, faces. They're a, they're, cow, they're stony cows. Hide them. And their arms are raised up toward the iron disc. All right. I asked uh, Kieran to uh, check it out and tell us what he can know about it. How do you want him to do that? Uh, he was going to wants to use his uh, knowledge of magical things and see what he can learn about it. Well, it looks like a bunch of statues, and yeah, all right, he doesn't get any. You know, he, Arcana doesn't do any good in this. Some type of hey, some, some type of contraption. Any idea of what some it type could of be used for or what the purpose is? Uh, he can tell that he looks up a little bit closer. The iron disc that's inside the, the circular smaller one has, um, on one side of it, he's looking, he can see that it is, um, etched a symbol of st of the sun and he looks on the bottom side and it's etched a symbol of the moon. But is it used for like summoning or conjuration or something like that? Not in not not in his book. It ain't. 
Doesn't look he's sitting up. He's seen no contraption like this for for magic. Investigate the room. Yes, that's, that's basically what you see. Uh, you know, I could give you the description again, but it's. Okay. Um, I'm looking for clues. The symbols. One side is the sun, other side is the moon. Um, okay. Does that ring me? Let's see. Hmm. Is there any kind of knowledge roll to for that? Well, I, have, I will I have, have uh, youth. So uh, may all three of y'all make me a history check. All three of you. No. Uh, with me. That's not going to help. Nice. What about you, Linder? What about you? I got an 18. I got oh, an 18. Did? Oh, you did? Um, two out of three ain't bad, I guess. Maybe it tells time? Okay. Hmm. Does that disc in the middle spin by any chance? Yeah, what it, it, yeah it looks well. It looks like it can. Um it does. It's not, you know, it's, you know, it's not, it's not moving right currently. now. No. Um, yeah. The sun is up. The moon is down. Let's look around for controls. So either it's not operating or it's just daytime. Yeah. How fast would this thing move? Let's yeah, make, a, make a, let's make a mark on something that looks like it should move and come back in a little while and see if it's moved. I think I have like some chalk or something in my disguise kit, maybe. Oh, he's doing that. I'm going to come over here and inspect the statue and search it and stuff. Yeah, they're just two life size statues. You can see that they got human faces when you look kind of in the cowls a little bit, you know? Um, and their arms are raised toward the iron disc. So an iron ring, 20 feet in diameter, is suspended from iron brackets that are fixed to the top of the pillars. And it hangs, you know, parallel to the floor, this circular ring. And inside this ring is a, is a, an iron disc that is slightly and smaller in diameter. And it, yeah. Um, there any, there's no it's way up floating. There. It's fl it, it is, um, it's floating inside the circular. So there's basically think like okay, this so is. You know, is like, you know, inside that a rotating mechanism up there, yeah. So but that middle disc is not touching anything. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Not that we can see anyway. Oh, you can look right at it. So there's just so the the iron oh, okay. ring is just is very you know, there's a thin ring around Okay. That is, that's got the bracket. Just, there's an, yeah, all right. I understand. It's now. attached. This middle part is yeah, attached yeah. to nothing. The disc itself. Interesting. Hey, I want to search the columns and the sta other statue as well. Mm -hmm. I'm going to use levitate and get a little closer look. You can float up yeah, above it. Yeah, you just yep. uh, four pillar four pillars support the twenty foot high ceiling. An iron ring twenty foot in diameter is suspended from iron brackets affixed to the top of the pillars, so that it hangs parallel to the floor twenty feet below. Nestled inside this ring is the circular iron disc, which is smaller in diameter. Uh, you've got the human-robed wizards um, whose arms are raised toward the disc, and that is it. Interesting. No face or anything if you get up close? He, he, ba there's basically, you can tell that they're human. They're just scowled. You know, okay, the cowls gotcha. over them are covering yeah, yeah. them, so you can't see them. Yep. Yeah. All right, uh, I'm ready to move on. I'm going to come down and start walking again. 
Oh, shit. Okay, fine. Yeah, you open the door. ba -ding! Wow. It's a hallway. Who the fuck? Exactly. Um, all right. Um, wow, look at all y'all just moving on in here. All right, he listens, doesn't hear anything. He checks the door, doesn't f find anything. It says, All clear. All right, I'll open the door. Or is it? All right. Uh, um, yeah, you just see a room, and yeah, you got to step in, and then you, when you do, you will see, um, a huge tapestry hangs on the wall. Just kind of like this. Um, it is huge and it is of a sickly purple color. And it undulates as though it's alive as you look at it. Its surface is covered and you see 11 unblinking eyes that surround one huge, large, central eye. And the, well, curtain, the curtain just waves, you know, like, but there's no wind, there's no mood, you don't hear anything, it just undulates. There's, it hangs on the wall. You move in there and you will then see more of the room you will see there are three columns. Three pillars of black stone stand in the corners. Attached to each pillar at waist height is a tarnished silver knob. A door uh, right to your left there uh, in the middle of that wall it looks like it's made of crystal. And you can see that there's like there's light on the other side of the door. Just kind of, there's a bit of a twinkle coming through the crystal. Are you all coming in, or am I doing it alone? <laughs> all right, I will come over here and peek behind the curtain. Okay. Uh... Uh, yeah, you, you kind of touch the curtain, even though it's moving and all the, as you moved into the room and do that, they, the, all 11 eyes followed you and you can see a wall basically. Uh, does the curtain, the tapestry, does it seem like it's really old and decrepit like the other nope. stuff? Nope. nope. It's moving uh, by no means that you can tell. Did it mimic? 
all the eyes are staring at Felinia when he walked by. Then they, some of them watch him and there's close to a couple of the smaller ones that are on stalks that are like, you know, it looks like a beholder <laughs> is in the, is in the curtain. The rest of them are kind of focused on y'all as y'all are standing there. I will pull the curtain down. Um, Try to anyway. Yeah, you're gonna. Yeah, you know, you, you'd have to do an offhand attach. It's attached to the ceiling up above, fairly well. It has hit points. Oh, okay, fine. <laughs> okay, so you give it a yank. It's still attached. Okay, that'll hit that. Yeah, it has a small AC. Yeah, you begin to start ripping it as it, you pull it down. You know, do I need to keep pulling? Yeah, you, you do. After you, you just after a while, you'll pull it down. Yeah, nothing happens. You just it just kind of off. You just you know. But so when the, when the curtain comes down, do the eyes go with it? Yeah, everything. Yeah, it's they're they're part of the curtain. Yeah. So now okay. it, yeah. I make sure the curtain is face down on the That's floor. fine. Yeah. Gotcha. And it stops moving when all, when you completely rip it off the wall, it basically just falls down to the ground and lands there, but it stopped moving. And then I want to search for secret passages behind the curtain. Is there one? I don't know. I don't know, I don't know but I'm going to search. Not with that roll. You're not. I assisted roll again. He gave you a pinch in the butt. Okay, yeah, we're all in. Something there. Hey, look, guys, there's something here. Oh, look, it's a thing. That is right. So, uh, open the door? Yeah, you open the door and you see it down the hallway. So you got a hallway and a door. Uh, so we open this door here. We check out this. Looks like maybe a little room before we go down the hall. Sure. Why not? That could also be another hallway, though. Yeah, let's uh, come check out the door over here. It's made of crystal. Is there a doorknob? No, there are not. There are three knobs on the pillars. I'm that is correct. A silver knob on the pillars. Waist height on each one. Anybody want to grab a, go to a pillar and turn the knob? Let's link here into the third one. Okay, so who's doing this? Whoa, 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 what's going on here? Okay. We're going to each grab a knob. Do we want to all turn at the same time? Three, two, one, turn. Turning. <laughs> oh, all three of you disappear. Oh, such beautiness. Oh, my God. Okay, yeah, y'all aren't there anymore. Um, like, like we're gone, yeah, gone, or just invisible? You no, know, you're gone. <laughs> you have now just disappeared. Oh no! Hold on, I said, let read this. Yeah, all three of you went. Bloop. Uh, oh, here, holy mackerel. Um, well, as best as I can tell. Uh, well, let me read this one more time. Uh, oh, okay. Any creature that touches the silver knob or... Okay, one second. I must... <laughs> you find yourselves... Well, I hold on a second. Okay, so Quetzal and Shadow. This now was where... It, Really throw me into the loop. Um, uh, 
All right, so I can't. Damn it! Um, I'm gonna have to pull y'all out. Hold on a second. Y'all are gonna have to go to another room for a second. Um, yeah, y'all are not where you think you're at. Um, here we go. One second. This is funny. I'm gonna put them in admin and lender. Okay. Uh, you guys sit tight for a second. Let me talk to Quetzal. Okay. <sighs> okay, Quetzal. Um, you and Shadow are by yourselves. I put my sword and look around and just wait. And all th- and all three knobs are gone. I don't know enough about magic to even begin to understand what's going on. Well, they all three touch the knobs, and all of a sudden they are not there anymore. <laughs> this is where I need Shadow. <laughs> I need Robert here. <laughs> oh no. Uh wow. Shadow goes, that this kind of sucks. Um Oh wow. I guess we stand here and wait for them to get back. I assume. Uh okay. Um Yeah. Shadow's gonna say maybe we should come back over here just to uh just in case. Put our back to the wall. And uh, kind of ch- change that. Okay, I'm gonna go. So sit tight. Your shadow's gonna pull out his ball of yarn, and I guess you'll sharpen your weapon. Yep. Okay, guys. Um, not gonna bring up a map of where you're at because you have no idea. Um, interesting. Uh, at the moment. So before you, you are just in a s- simple flat, fifteen high foot chamber. There's nothing in the room. It's a little bit, it's an oval in shape and not, you're fine outside of that. You uh, are not in your room anymore and you see basically an oval room and to your West is a hallway that goes into another 20 foot high dome ceiling room. Um, you've got, uh, um, it's, you're both kind of all sitting center in this room. Like I said, it's only about 15 foot in diam, you know, in total length and an oval shape to your West is about a 10 foot, um, um, 10 foot ceiling, 10 foot wide hallway into what looks to be a 20 foot circular room on the other side that you can see. And then it looks like to the North is another hallway going up. So let me, so if I show you the party sheet, um, if you go to like, if you go to the, your party sheet and, and, um, your party order, you know what I'm talking about in, uh, in the, in the uh, party sheet. Okay. So I'm going to draw kind of like where y'all are at. It's an oval room. Let's just say, cause I can't draw ovals and the three of y'all, or in this room. Sorry, uh, chat can't see this. You then have a 10 foot hallway into what looks to be another bigger room. And you can see that there's a hallway going north out of that. Well, before we leave this room, I want to search it and see if there's, there's any, nothing in it. It's completely empty. No sign, nothing no there at all. Nothing. Nope. Nothing there at all. Okay. Mm-hmm. One oh, second. Oh, 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 oh. One second. Um, uh, oh, hold on. Um, Okay, I, uh, Flennial, I, uh, really? Um, well, I just send you a message. Okay, one second. Oh, this is just going to be 
hunky dory. Um, Linder and Karen. Actually, Karen's gonna put in when you stepped here, Flennial. Um, you guys are watching Flennial move down the hallway, and all of a sudden, one minute he's there, and the next minute. Standing before you, oh, how do I, wish I could show this. Can I not show, I could show, yeah, I can do this. No, there I can. Okay, thanks. I was actually going off, remember I can show that. Um, Flannial is no longer there and in his place. Is this creature who turns and starts moving toward the two of you? Roll me initiative. And Flennial? Right. That's you. Got it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> this is this is absolutely crazy. Uh so yeah, Linder, Flennial, uh, you're out of it for a moment. Linder rolls, Kieran rolls. Okay, and uh, Linder, you up first. This creature turns and moves toward y'all. I'm gonna dispel it. Uh, you're gonna cast dispel magic. Yes. Uh, does not work. Nothing happens. Uh, actually, no. Well, I'm sorry. Hold on. Make sure. Okay. Uh. No, because Dispel doesn't, it's already been triggered. Uh, well, see, I don't understand. So, it's probably more for the spell, right? Yeah, but it's an effect that's on, it's, it's a, tr it's a trap effect. Yeah, it's not, it's not permanent though. It's permanent until it's he not. dies. Yeah, unfortunately it is. It's he has polymorph, to, isn't it? According to this, he has to die for, oh. yeah. Yeah. So it well, doesn't. It, so I, I get you. I, well, that's what it's saying, though. So you, it, it is a polymorph trap, um, but it doesn't say that for him to revert back, he has to. The creature has to drop to zero hit points. Yeah, but you I know, mean, that. I mean, you that. Yeah. yeah. Why wouldn't they? What? Why wouldn't they write that in there then? If you could just cast dispel magic. Because that makes it too easy to get rid of. I don't know. It's a third level spell slot. I, 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 what, can, I can polymorph, can, 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 well, can polymorph be dispelled by that? I don't see why not. You just have to roll against it. It's a higher level spell than the slot, right? Damn it. Um. So makes sense, but yeah, they don't give me the they don't give me a roll on that though. They basically say he fails to save, he gets transformed into this creature. So they say uh, the spell yeah. magic gives me a roll. The same or, thing about it being polymorph or a, the spell polymorph or anything like that. No, it's just a trap, just a polymorph trap. So it changes well, polymorph you. Polymorph trap would mean using polymorph. So. Yeah, if it's a trap using the spell polymorph, then spell oh, magic can dispel a a spell or an effect. I'm pretty sure it says that in its description. Spell, uh, yeah, object, creature, object, or magical effect. For each spell of fourth level or higher, I have to make an ability check DC 10 plus the spell's level. I don't have a so polymorph trap. So what's the spell that are you saying that you roll a? Polymorph is a fourth level. It's fourth level, so it'd be a fourteen, is what you're saying to roll to uh, to 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 uncat to break it, is what you're saying, right? Yeah, right. I, I guess so. Then, I, well, they don't. Yeah, they'd put that in there that you could cast dispel magic. I would, I guess so. So, but go ahead. I mean, it's fine. a magic. It's a magical effect. Yeah, you know? yeah. Well, I figure kind of defeats the purpose of the trap then because well, at this, at this rolling level, a, rolling a charisma check to see if you do your dispel right is no different from rolling an attack to see if you kill it. Okay. Roll it. As far as I can tell. That's I mean, fine. You know. I don't have a problem with it. I, the logic's there for me. I'm just like, you know, you know, putting something simple like that. So then it Well, I am going to re-roll that. <laughs> so what you're saying is that it doesn't drop. Okay. All right. Okay. So then that would drop it then is what we're saying. Is that all of a sudden... I, be I believe so. Okay. 
Okay. So, what did you say, Brian? Sorry. That roll would dispel a ninth level spell. Yeah. Okay. So, I kind of defeats the purpose of the trap then. Huh. It made him burn I, a third level spell. It made him learn to spell. That's yeah. true. It did. That's true. So there's some points to it. I just wish it would be a little bit harder if you're going to put that type of trap there. Um, I mean, why did know. he turn into a carrion crawler? How hard he is that going to be for me to kill? Yeah, that's right. right. But you still got to beat him up. Yeah. So that's what, you know, the point is, is that he's got it. He has to actually take the, the form of the carrion crawler and attack. He has to do everything that carrion crawler mm-hmm. would. So it's just, you know. Okay. So anyway, all right. Well, then y'all... Uh, Y'all can move. That That's fine. So yeah, we defeat that, and y'all move, and you come out, and you will find yourselves now. If you will go down toward the entrance of the mine where you fought the worm, you guys come out north of a hallway, and find yourselves. I found it. Okay. Yep. Let me tell Linder. Wow. Hold on one second. Okay, Quetzal. Uh, still hanging out, having fun? <laughs> yeah, still here. Yeah, so one second there, some hijinks and all that. I, unless you, you know, I don't have shadow here, so unfortunately it's really, I don't want to bore you to death, but um, uh, I think I'm, I'm going to pull your companions back into the room so you can at least hear what's going on, but y'all are y'all are just going to sit there tight. I'm assuming they're, they're coming back your way. They just found out where they're at, so one sec. Okay. I, I brought y'all back. Hold on. I brought y'all back into the room because now y'all can tell where y'all are at. Yes. All right. We're going to go back towards where. Yeah. I'm going to unlock left. tokens. I'm unlocking tokens. So please just, uh, if you, yeah, you know, the quickest way to get back up there. Yeah. Please, please move as you find Quetzal sharpening a weapon and, uh, uh, hey guys! Uh, Shadow is uh, playing with his ball of yarn. <laughs> <laughs> Have a nice trip. It was interesting. I, uh, I, I turned into a carrion crawler for a minute. He did. It was more like three seconds before we were exploded. And yeah, you'll notice that the knobs on the uh, pillars are gone. <laughs> All right, that's good. Let's come try to open this door again. It's there's no way to you. You have no way. Uh, it's made of crystal. It is hey, crystal. A very thick crystal. <laughs> yeah, very thick. Oh, thick crystal. Yeah. Mm. Yep. And there is flickering light, kind of. You can see behind it. Very dim. Very very dim. But it is a thick crystal form. I'll even I'll assist Quetzal. So. We'll- Three, two, one, kick the door. Nothing happens to it. It's not even a roll. Does it? A it roll. Does it? You don't even see a. You don't even see a dent in it. This maybe is a red herring to make you turn the knobs and get teleported to the other room. Maybe. I don't know. You try knock on it. The second level spell. Nothing happens. Uh, I said he, he just, so I'm just letting you know I don't have so hold on let me go back and look at this so the three pillars of the knob y'all twist them uh, y'all are teleported and the knobs are gone okay yeah, I think so it is screw it I can't it has no handle. It says the door in one corner stands closed. Behind that door is you see a small flickering light. Um, uh, the door has no knobs on it. It doesn't have any AC. Um, it's crystal. You want to um, reenact the movie real quick? Fine. You use a knock on it. Fine. Whoever used the knock. Use a knock. Cause All right. yeah, because oh, I got nothing okay. else on the door. All right. Cool. All right. So here we go. But it is got something in it, so I'm not gonna keep that from y'all. Okay. So we open up the door and embedded in the wall next to the door 
is a brass panel with four brass buttons arranged in a diamond formation. Very similar to kind of like the room is formed, you know. Um, in the, there's a small pale white light from the ceiling that just kind of flickers little by little, you know, providing like, think of like a, a bad fluorescent light, you Candle know, it pops every now and then, you oh. know, and it, you know, it kind of does that. Um, and it's all, this whole room is crystal, even in the ceiling above and the dome is crystal. Uh, in the floor, you see something very small and mithril like lying in the middle of the floor. Nope. About six inches long. Uh, like a dagger or something? In the shape of a J. Hmm. Looks very oh, similar okay. to the two, looks very similar to a key you just found. I'll step in and pick it up and hopefully not get teleported again. Nope, you find a flat six foot six inch long mithril key in the shape of a J with a loop on the top. It's lying on the floor. And right, I will pick it up. Yep, I'm putting it in the party sheet. Okay. I will hand it to Aaron. And like I said, uh, right in front of you is a brass panel with four brass buttons arranged in a diamond formation. Uh, you see buttons there engraved. Uh, the top button has an arrow pointed up. The bottom button has an arrow pointing down. The left button is engraved with a tiny human stick figure. And the right button is engraved with a much larger human stick figure. Is this an enlarging, reducing chamber, maybe? Could be. Um, by all means, go test it out. Well, let's uh, test it out on something that's not me. Hang on, let me see what I've gotten here. Here, I'll throw this. I've got a, a, a regular old rapier just chilling around in my... Oh, I'm not carrying that. Never mind. That's at home. Let's... Hmm. A silver arrow. I'll put a silver arrow arrow on the floor. I guess someone still has to push the button now. That's true. Ah uh, no. I will mage hand it. Well Quetzal's in the room now. Quetzal, do you want to be enlarged? Maybe? Yes. Alright, I'll push <laughs> the enlarge button with my mage hand. <sighs> What we presume to be the enlarge button. Okay. Um, so you push the button, the one that has the, that you have patiently put in the, the right button. The big stick figure. Yeah. The, you're pushing yes. the right button. Uh, and as you push the button, the door. Uh, so when you hit the knock spell, it, it basically slid into one of the walls. You know, you hit it and it just, it opened up. Well, now it begins to, basically slide across the floor to shut the chamber. Okay. Oh. And you'll see a panel. So I'm moving flennial. So we're saying the panel was right here on this. As it happens, another panel, uh, the part of the wall slides open and you see two buttons sitting there. One that has a, uh, up, it basically up and down symbol on it. Oh boy. Okay. And the, the door shuts and all of a sudden you see flashing light in the, um, going on in the room. All right. I say, so to, uh, 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 Quetzal. Roll me a D6 in the tower, please. Okay. Um, okay. When, uh, yeah. And so <clears throat> it flashes. You see some crackling. You hear noises and all that. And, uh, and then all of a sudden, the, the room starts, the behind the door, the room stops flashing. So the door open again. Push the button. Looks like 
Yes. Yeah, you push the button, it opened like the open button and the door, and Quetzal's enlarged. <laughs> Holy crap, I can't believe that worked. I mean, I'm so glad you're okay. Uh, I don't have enlarged on him, so he's now... Um, has anybody got it? In, in, Here it has it. There, put the, I, I have enlarged reduce. Put somewhere. the enlarged effect on Quetzal. Um, found out. Okay. He is now enlarged. Oh. Quetzal, you are one size bigger. You are. Oh, I don't. Wait, it went away. Is it subject oh, it is. to the time limit? Is it I'm subject not, to the I'm not, time You'll limit? find out. You'll find oh. out. And then, then um, Avenger put him on also. I went off. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, here, let me take the con off. Cause yeah, because the, the effect that we give him is subject to the time limit. It is, but I'm I'm taking it off. I took the C off. Okay. So it will, uh, and I'll, I, I'll, I'll, I'll I know, the, I know how to, I know yeah. how long to do it. So, um, okay. <laughs> That's what you're Congratulations. How you feeling, Quetzal? <laughs> Pretty much. Got to squeeze through the door now. All right. Anybody else want to get enlarged? No, not not right. Not really. Nope, nope. <laughs> That's funny. Okay. There, y'all back. I'm trying to see. And here comes Quetzal and Shadow. And Shadow walks down in the room. Uh, you turn the corner and it dead ends. Well, that seems fake to me. Uh, I think it's going to be a search for secret doors again. In the tower. I'm here. <laughs> you. Um, here. Um, let me see. What do we hear? You hear. Yeah, y'all can hear pound. You hear like banging, you know, hammers pounding on metal and also you can feel heat um on the walls as y'all move into that area and you can see that yeah there is uh, a, a crack of a outline of a door there all right try to go quietly stealthily open the door yeah you can open up the door you do that and your cost you you're hit with definitely what is uh a, a wave of heat coming from in here and you can see a door that's to um let me see uh i don't need this up you know coming from the room somewhere you can you can feel just a unbearable heat waves you know and you touch the when you touch the door you could feel it but when you open it oh. the air just cost you it is hot is Whatever. it also smoky there is some smoke you can smell and you can hear banging. Okay. Uh, you can um, hear like some, the sound of a forge. It sounds like a forge. You hear definitely what sounds like giant speak, talking, roaring out. Ah. You, um, it's the back door to the fire giants. Uh, do we want to move forward? Is this something that we can move through without being damaged? or You don't or think what? so at all. Nope. Yeah, let's let's not for now. I can really do that problem if I turn into an air elemental. That wouldn't be an issue. Yeah, we can worry about the fire giants later, though. We gotta find this mimic. Find a uh, mimic. Or well, you guys could um go back in the room, and I could go lure the fire giants out. I don't think they'll fit through this hallway. Aren't they huge? They can squeeze through. All right, good luck. I 
I'm so I will so if you're going to initiate combat, Brian, I'm not. I will I will pull Shadow back to some degree because I'm not going to risk him. If you want, if you're willing to do that, I, I know how we normally play, but I'm not willing to risk to put him in um, harm's way until he's here. Just so you know. All right, um, we'll we'll come back to it later then, I guess. I would, I would. I don't. Not that I'm trying to thwart you on it, but knowing that you know. No, I hear you. It's yeah. fire giants. Yeah, it yeah. could be. A, 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 we're assuming it's fire giants, and it could be risky, and you, don't you want to kill him you, off. Not here. Don't you know who knows giants speak? Don't you know it or run it before or somebody? I can't remember. I speak dwarf. That's uh, it's, but right, it's. I, I think uh, I'm not think not of, not, not on these two. Let me see. Hold on. Do they know common to? Let me check. Make sure. And maybe that. shadow. Uh, so, they you you rec you recognize the speak. So, you can hear some roaring in there. Several voices. Okay. So. But you have you are correct in that you think you have found a back door, to something. But it is hot. <laughs> Okay, so we'll uh, we'll uh, back off of this. We'll close the door and Thank we'll you. head back. You. Now. Not to trying to thwart you, but yes, for the moment, you got plenty more areas to do, to play around with. So, all right, so come this way, and we will move. And yeah, if, if he does, if he doesn't make it, we'll probably pull. We'll probably will end early. Uh, Maybe we will probably in nine thirty instead of ten thirty ish, but then we'll definitely. I was not. I was thinking about maybe not playing next Tuesday, but we'll go ahead and play uh, as long as everybody's going to make it. So uh, for next week, okay. Uh, Shadow moves up, and um, doo -doo 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 -doo. does not hear anything, and. Does not detect anything <laughs> except for the loud stomping of a huge quetzal. <laughs> Who's walking on all fours currently? <laughs> Somewhat. Uh, you're, having to, you're having to squeeze through a few spots. Okay. Uh, so he says, yeah, he didn't detect any traps. All right. I'll open the door. Okay. You will see. And. Um, You open up the door and hanging on um, um, the inside of the door is a sign, wooden sign that it's and it says uh, "Keep out." And and you notice that when you didn't look that uh, there was a hook on your side of the door that that looks like that sign would hang on, but it's not for the moment. Uh, inside this room is. Um, uh, rows of dusty niches line the walls. Most of them, about half of the niches, contain what look to be small little wooden coffers. Right here, um, oh, no, farther down, I'm sorry, you will see, your, your vision will I see, in the back here, Uh, looks to be um, a stove, big black stove. And along these you know, walls where you're at, you see a door right to your right, but along the walls and all that are um, little, like I said, little wooden coffers. All right. Uh, you well, smell uh, all different sorts of smells, spices and different dust and dirts. Um Linda and uh, Karen, y'all, y'all get y'all get a little excited because all this, you're beginning your your smells and all that would remind you of a like spell component storage area. Well, I might have some of that too because I use spell components. Okay, sometimes. all right, that's fine. Yep. Yeah, um, check out the little coffers and such. There's about, on this wall, here's about 
10 coffers that are still um, um, got the niches are mostly empty except for about 10. And y'all can see, yeah, when you look up to them written on the little label in common uh, is uh, I'll have to play it out, but it looks like they're. Um, oh, uh, so you walk up to here. And he'll see a little coffer that says animate dead on it. And then he'll see another one right below it that says Bigby's hand. And then another one off to the right that says fireball. All right. Um, well, Kieran will go check out the first one and see what's in it. He pulls that, he kind of slowly pulls it out and he's, yeah, he says, it says animate dead on it. And he opens up the lid and why would he do that? I don't know. Cause Flanniel told me he was going to do that. Oh gosh. Don't oh, do it right away. Hang on. Uh Oh, wait, Oof, what you... danger. Big magic danger. Be careful. That's all I'm saying. Uh, he's got his hat. It's like magic TNT. He's got his feather. It'll protect That's him. Not... <laughs> all right. I'm going over here. <laughs> do you have a concern? He says, Linder. Yeah. You know, you keep going. Flennial's risking his life. That's all. I mean, I, I don't, I, I, I wouldn't open this stuff without, you know, at least examining it thoroughly first. Okay. First well, only. I need about three minutes to tuck kids in. I'll be right back. <laughs> okay. Three minutes. <laughs> so do you, well, he says, we'll, we'll cast uh, detect magic. Tell me if anything's in sure. the room. Sure. I'll, uh, I'll do that. I'll ritual it. You ritual it. You think about it while we're waiting on the kid, kid tucking in bed maneuver. And, um, there, um, is no active magic in the room other than mm -hmm. there's like little bitty, you're, you're getting the feel the coffers kind of contain, they contain stuff in them, but, okay. the, but the coffers themselves are not magical. Okay. All right. I think you're fine. That's fine. And it's a fair enough assumption to ask. I'll even give you a point of inspiration back, Linder, because you're looking out for your fellow companion and not millennial. He just sacrificed him. <laughs> All right, get over here, Bob. Go open that thing. <laughs> he opens it up. He opens up the animate dead coffer. And inside it's got uh, three vials of human blood, some strips of flesh, and a little pouch of bone dust. It's basically the components needed to oh, okay. create the spell. To cast yeah. it. I mean, not, you know, to cast it. So that is what he finds. And that's begin to make sense that of what all the uh, stuff that you're smelling is you smell components and things like that that go in. And he opens up another one for Bigby's hand and he finds a little eggshell in it and some snake skin, a snake skin glove. Neat. So I mean, if there's any valuable ones, we can certainly take them. If you would, you, right. well, there's there are several coffers in here. You see, like, about, about a half a dozen in this room. Uh, let me yeah. see. How many I, total I did particular... I say there were? Um, roughly half. Go ahead. I Sorry. don't have particular need for the more, the, the more normal ingredients because yeah. I use a focus. Yeah, ever, and so does he. Yeah, so there's about 12 in this room. And then you see another room down to the south. And, you know, some of the same smells are coming out of there. Hmm. Any expensive stuff? Diamonds? Anything? Uh, well, so those are spell components. <laughs> there's a lot. Yeah, no, no. There, that's truly. So you would have to start going through them all. And yeah. Okay. All right. So, but you know they're here. So if that's something yeah, you want to yeah. do, we'll, we'll put a spot to it. But there's. We can always come back. To it, it looks like it's storage. Yeah. And we're waiting on the uh um one second. Um 
We're waiting, waiting. I, I was trying to see if Robert was responding, if he was going to make it or not. He may not be. So, yeah, we'll probably we'll probably pull here early at, at 930 just to uh, play it safe. Seems because like, y'all are, get, yeah, you're getting to a spot again. Oh, really, duh? Um, that I would prefer <laughs> all of y'all were here. <laughs> um. What's up, Excel? Um, you can. Are you going to examine that door while we're waiting? And even I was just going to ask it, see if Shadow would come over. Shadow comes over, and he doesn't detect any traps on it, but he does hear talking on the other side. Uh, can you and tell what language? She uh, uh, basically hear what sounds to be several more voices giant speak and there is a, a female voice that seems to be um very louder than the others seems to be dis gotcha. disturbed about something and he notices he can he, by what he by listening to it because his perception so damn high anyway i'm not making him roll it sounds like it's a big room because the voices kind of have a echo to them I hope they didn't discover our open door up top. Doesn't feel heat. Hmm. I think we should probably leave them be for now. What do you guys think? Oh, yes. Yes, please. <laughs> Finish exploring the rest of the dungeon. <laughs> Well, it's only you and Quetzal right now. We're waiting on uh, Brian. Yes, we back. are. Yeah. You're correct. Shadow, Shadow just grabs his ball of yarn again. Let's go find out. Let's go. Um, let me see. Yeah. Shadow gonna goes. These corners. We're going to go back over here. And y are y'all are interested in taking them where y'all where y'all came up out of the teleportation area? How about that? Okay, sure. Yeah, we can go check that stuff out. Yeah, I go around back. Yeah, we're we're we got decided. So what they did is uh, he pulled. Yeah, he ba fl uh, Lender cast detect magic in the room just to make sure there was nothing going on with the coffers and all that, and then he didn't detect anything and. When uh, um, Kieran opened up one of the little coffers, he's basically finding uh, an animate dead. He basically found the components for the animate dead spell to use when you cast That's what it. I was okay. And so there's about a dozen coffers in this room. And then you saw the big stove and, you know, looks like another room to the south. Shadow and Linder listened to the door and basically heard what sounded like talking in the room and could hear what sounded like giant speak. And there was a female voice that was louder than the others. Uh, and she seemed to be upset about something by the loudness of her voice, but it sounded like they were in a kind of a bigger room. There was no heat on the door, but that there were several giants in there. And so um, decided to wait for a moment and we'll go explore the rest of the dungeon before y'all make any um bold maneuvers and decided to go down here to the room where y'all came up out of the teleportation area and y'all are sitting here now south why don't we um, come over here and check out these doors yeah yeah so we're going to explore the rest of the deal and well it, since it looks like robert probably not going to make it since he's busy and all that we'll stop here at 9 30 uh and then pick up next tuesday we'll go ahead and play I won't pull, I was going to pull the plug and just take out the rest of the year. But since we've kind of had already a week off and then getting short here, we will play next week. As long as we have everybody. So, uh, Thanks before you, he will, um, um, listen in and uh, yeah, you notice that? Yeah. It's, yeah. Be a child. Yes. Yes. Gary. Yes. It's, it is episode 69. Gary's uh, being a uh, four-year-old right now. Um, 
detects a, a, um, a, it doesn't detect traps. Um, detects a, a, a low hum. Is it just me or is Dust voice getting all crackly? Is mine? Yeah, I'm hearing that as yeah, I'm hearing it that is? as well. Okay, hold yeah, on. Yeah, you're crackly. Let me uh, come in and out. One second. How's that sound? Better. Okay. Yeah. I just came in out of Discord. All right. Um, <clears throat> so uh, he just detects the kind of a faint hum behind the door. That's it. Doesn't seem All to right. be. Uh, check the traps. Yeah, he checked that and uh, doesn't seem to be a lock on the door. Doesn't seem to be a lock, right. basically, what I'm saying. Check it out. Open it up. Open it up, and you did definitely the magic users you detect has yeah, some energy coming out of here, and you open it this room, and what you see um, look to be like six cells that uh, are in this ten foot high room with arch ceilings, um, and there's portcullises. You know the bars are dropped down in front of these cells areas, and you can detect some type of some type of field. Um, is engulfing this room. Um, there is a, um, in the Southwest kind of looking around the Southwest corner, there's something like a humanoid creature in plate armor with arrows, like 20 arrows sticking out of it stuck in there. Um, there is a, um, Bolted to the bolted to the floor in the middle of the room is a four foot wide, seven foot long iron plate with a comb shaped hole in it, and a lever sticks out of the floor. A four foot wide, so that's not even this. Okay, seven foot long iron plate, and the magic users all of y'all that have Arcana basically detect some type of energy in there. All right. I will cautiously uh, step inside. Is my detect uh, magic still up from earlier? Hey, right now? Hour. Uh, yes, I say it's still up. Um, there is some type of magical field in here. Um, I'm guessing it like an anti-magic shell or something. Um, so I will cautiously okay. step inside the room. It's you detected properly is exactly what is engulfed this room. So, yeah, um, you step in other than feeling that wave over you, which would then drop your detect magic, right? <laughs> I didn't step in. I'm standing outside. <laughs> does, does so there, you said there was go one. In? You said there was one figure right here in the south the corner and it was full of arrows. Is that uh, the only thing that's in here? Yeah, lying in the southwest cell is a humanoid clad in plate armor riddled with arrows. Um, the remain, um, let me see. Um, there are mimic? nothing. The gaps between the bars are about four inches wide and everything, every one of the... Um, Portaclies are dropped to the ground. There's nothing in the other cells. Um, can I tell what kind of humanoid it looks like? It's big. Whatever it is, you'd have to get closer to see. Could be an orc or... I mean, yeah, was it was like a... Or, I figured like a hobgoblin probably. We've no, it's bigger than that. Now. You When you get closer and all that, you can see what looks like to be the remains of an orog. Okay. And it's... Very dead, I think. Very dead. Yeah, the arrow's still riddled in it. Yeah. <laughs> And the arrows look like they, you see some arrows inside the cell too. Okay. Like, um, she, like it was shot, it was shot while it was in the cell. Well, uh, that's it. I guess there's not much to do there. Um, I guess we could try to open the cell and search the body, but it probably wouldn't have a whole lot on it since it was in yeah. a prison cell. You don't see anything else on it from where you're looking at it? Yeah, <clears throat> You know, I wouldn't really expect somebody in a prison cell to be wearing armor either, but here we are. Yeah, I wouldn't either. Maybe that armor would be magical once we took it out. Mm, it's also riddled with arrows. <laughs> Doesn't look good anymore. <laughs> probably not worth saving. <laughs> 
All righty, let's move on down. Let's. Should we conduct a more thorough investigation of these circular rooms down here? They did, when they looked through them, there was nothing in them. They're just plain empty rooms, okay. except for where they showed up. All of a sudden, the rooms are otherwise empty, other than what they see the size and dimensions of them. Can we see? Yeah, sorry, I was check. I was just double checking my yeah yeah deal there, and you basically see hallway that turns and goes. Up north. All right. You move here. You're going to see. Everybody get your spot. And where's Kieran? And where's... Sh did, oh, there's Shadow. Okay. So Shadow. Yeah. Okay. So what you see... Uh, perpendicular corridor right here. There's dead ends from this corridor that goes the you know the di diagonal from north to s northeast to southwest. Uh, there um, looks to be um, beyond this little archway that you can kind of see built into the wall a little bit here. Um, a what basically can be described as a big sit six foot tall skeletal stone statue with butterfly wings and sharp bone spurs on its forearms and elbows. It stands atop a three foot high stone base. It clutches a stone wand and points it toward the floor. I look hmm. towards the, uh, the wall on the opposite end down that way is there any nothing like marks in the wall like it has um something that impacted that wall a number of times no the the, the uh, wand actually points points down to the floor in front of it not across that doesn't mean he couldn't raise it and point it yeah, yeah. It, okay there... i understand what you're saying but you uh you can go over there and look but from what you're looking at at this point you see nothing on the walls on the other side over there Still within the de the uh, detect magic there. There is no time in in the time limit for mine. Uh, you you don't detect anything. Okay. All right. I will step out cautiously. <laughs> I guess if you're detect magic, that sucks. But you know what? I have to grant it because of what you do. Uh, your detect magic is going to detect. Something in the floor right here. Ah, could be a trap. The wand's pointing right it. toward it. Yeah. Could be another one of those polymorph traps or something. Mm-hmm. Can I tell what school it is? Do I have to Transmutation. Get You'd have to cast it. Well, mm -hmm. no, I think your detect magic would detect that, right? Isn't it telling yeah, you that? Yeah, okay. it gives yeah. me the school if yeah. I study yeah, it for a little bit. It's, tell it's transmutation. Okay. You might be right then. Very very well might be right about the polymorph trap. Hmm. Okay, so... Let's see. Not around it, though, eh? Right on the floor. Ten foot square. Or a little five foot square. Sorry. Okay. Right on the floor. All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sneak past it. You yeah, can. You can step wall. around it without stepping on what you can tell is what's glowing. Okay? Cool. All right, I'm gonna check out this statue. See if it does it move, or is that the nope. only spot it can point at? It's yeah. It doesn't look like you, you don't see any move point. You know, movement junctures in it, joints yeah, yeah, and like that. Joints. But it's just a stone statue of this skeletal looking creature that is hideous. You know, you know. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Let's see about the other end here. Yeah. Okay, Look yeah. So, down. and y'all would be actually able to see that you could. You said an archway in the wall over here? Well, no, right there. So see, look to the south. See the little indentations in the wall where the polymorph trap's at? There's an archway right mm, there. Gotcha. That's what I meant by that. Okay. Yeah. I see. Yeah, it's just a little design to try and force you into the trap. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, and you turn and look, and you see a door. And... Uh, Uh, 
a hallway going continues on and looks like it goes off to the right there. Come on, big boy. Don't, don't, don't. Okay. All right. You got a door and you then see a little nook here for another door. And then the hallway turns uh, and goes back east. And here you look into a, a little area and there's a nook. And set into the alcove in the back of this dusty chamber is another life-size statue of granite that looks to have uh, um, it's his hair is a humanoid wizard. Hair's all sticking up, going in all yeah, different directions. True. Had wild eyed look in his face. Um, he's thrusting a stone staff outward in a threatening manner. It's fascia is sculpted in look of wild abandon. And you see his robe is engraved with hundreds of lidless eyes. The statue stands atop one foot thick granite disc. Yeah, point that to take magic over there. Indeed. Don't detect anything. Well, all right. Well, then, let's go check out the statue and search it. You can make me some checks if you want in the tower. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, Linder. Oh, Linder. Yeah, that happens. That sucked. It's you, only a plus four. Yeah. <laughs> you don't detect yeah, anything. Yeah, why not? I'll, I'll use another You're one. You're going to use the inspiration? Yeah. <laughs> I gave you a free one. <laughs> oh, much better, Linder. Yeah. So what was Flennial's? Okay. So, well, yeah. Flennial had a 26. Sorry. But <laughs> yeah. Yes, dear. Uh-oh. Oh, look at this. I got a delivery. Oh, and this is nice. Isn't this so sweet? Don't spill it. It's a big, giant cup of hot chocolate. Perfect. Isn't that nice? Oh. We're settling in for a snowstorm tomorrow, so that's what I need. Mm -hmm. Nothing quite like a cup full of caffeine before you go to bed. What, what rate? You don't get it all yeah, don't get all the foam yet because the they'd all make fun of me. So, yeah, it's in a big <laughs> glass, a big, giant cup of I don't give a... Okay, but she does. Hmm. <laughs> How oh, nice. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, Felinium, um, uh, Linder passed over. He was looking at stuff, but then you go, wait a second. Look at the, one of the eyes. It looks like it's, uh, it like it, it you can press one of the eyes in. I cautiously press it in. You press it and coming out of Hallister's bootie. Um, you hear dang, you hear something two two pieces of metal slam on the ground. Of course. I, I'll look and see what it is. <laughs> you see two flat six foot inch long pieces of mithril laying on the ground. Two keys. Two, two of them. No, mithril keys. Nice. One is oh, an nice. F and one is a, in the shape of a V. All right. And what letters do we have now? With small loops. Let's see. I have Put the them in U. The, uh, there you go. F and V. There's not a C um, and a K. Kieran, so. Kieran has a J. Uh, yeah, Shadow has key. one. And there's an F and a V. So why don't you take one and then Quetzal will take one. <laughs> oh, I, yeah. And that's yeah. five of the six keys. Okay. Um, that's, and that's, uh, yeah. He, uh, maybe Hallister doesn't have, maybe the visage of maybe slightly changed. So he looks a little bit more or less constipated. <laughs> he's right. making a face of great relief. Yeah, but yeah, he's got a little bit of a, you see like part of one side of his lip, a little uptick and a smile. <laughs> Satisfied grin. Yeah, that's right. That's, that's sad. Okay. Um, all Welcome right. to Trich, everybody. We're doing poop jokes today. How long would your detect magic now drop off? Has it been an hour? It, I, I, it could be. Yeah. I guess that's up to you. Yeah. Okay. Has 
Just as you were going to check the door, it drops off. Doesn't oh, mean yeah. anything, right. folks. It just drops off. Okay. Yeah, the timer has expired. The timer has expired. There are two doors before you. Um, yeah. He listens to him. Hears nothing. Yep. Doesn't do anything. Yeah. I'll open the door. Okay. I'll go ahead and give you the whole room. Uh, this is a very dusty room with an arch 20 foot high ceiling in it. There are four limestone sarcophagi with faded dwarvish inscriptions line the perimeter. All right. I think we need to have everybody in here for this one. Oh, one second. Don't move. Because you know it, you love it. He sets it off again. Um, you failed again, Brian. Yeah, we're using inspiration again. <laughs> Holy, oh, that time you didn't fail. That was a 19. I think I needed to have it. Oh, no, no, actually, sorry. You need a 20. Um, Oof. Can I inspire you? Oh, Do you need inspire? I already used inspiration. You already used inspiration. No, no, yeah. no. Can Do I you... use bardic inspiration on you? You wouldn't no, know that. You wouldn't late. know that the save is coming. Next time. Yeah, yeah. So, oh, all of a sudden, Brian is standing there, and the next minute, he's not. And before you, looks like I inspired him just in time. Oh Lord, it's back! It's back. And Brian, you can y'all to yeah, yeah, I don't see this as giving y'all much thr trouble. I would assume hell, get the hell out of the way and let Quetzal go do his thing. Unless we want Quetzal to fight it, we'll do that. We'll have oh, the we fight. Definitely, we definitely want to see we're Big gonna, Quetzal fight the Hokor. We're going to get Quetzal his fight, and then this is where we'll call it here after they damage the hook horse. So everybody, roll your initiative. Uh, Might want to lock the tokens, Brian. Though. Yeah, I am, except for Brian, because he's now a hook horror. And let's see if I get to attack anybody. Yeah, uh, <laughs> Quetzal. I mean, uh, Shadow's gonna go. Oh, God, he's gonna come over here, and he's gonna play with this ball of yarn. So, Quetzal, <laughs> please, <laughs> at your leisure. <laughs> We would not want to rob him of this greatness that he has right now. I am a very large lizard man with a very yes. large sword. I would recommend not walking behind him. <laughs> <laughs> More poo jokes. Pretty much. We're four years old. Because I have a big glass of... Oh, that's just not right. Really? That's that's gonna hurt. That's gonna hurt. I was gonna say you should have yeah, killed it. Yeah, two <laughs> hits. <laughs> two hits. You hit it first with what? That's awesome. What was the first one? A thirty. Thirty. It, it only had sixty-five, and then he hits it with a forty-seven because he's enlarged. <laughs> that's pretty good. What happens Hold when on. I crit? Sorry, Brian. I've tried to get you to to roll a... You had one save after you did the one time before when you were the cube. And I thought you might get out of that, but your save, I, I gave it to the end of your turn and you made it. That was... Okay, so you get one hook whore here. Let me... Let me... Where's the polymorph trap? I need to roll a hook whore. Let me give you all the XP on that. And, and it was the uh, the dwarf we helped. I don't know if we get XP for that. Yeah, you did actually. There was uh, it actually the the change is, but it actually uh, it actually didn't give you any, even though it was an encounter. Um, I'll give you a couple hundred for it. What the hell? Because it's Christmas time. And what's the hook one for? XP each? No, I actually give you two hundred. Um, oh, it's forty. Each. Hold on wow. a second, and I got to give you the hook horror. There wasn't one for that, so hook horror, and we're gonna give that's a, a ooh, that's a three, that's a seven hundred popper right there. 
Hey, okay. 400 each. There you go. All right. So that is where we're going to hold it. I want to, don't want to rob them too much more, but we are down uh, two players. And since Robert wouldn't make, couldn't make it because he's doing stuff at his church, um, we will hold here. So they are getting close to um, some big encounters. Not that I'm trying to give it away, but I'd rather have most of them here instead of not so that everybody can fight their way and fairly. Um, so we will play next Tuesday. It is the only thing going on the stream this week because we want to wish everybody. So we're going to be, we're done for the night. Everybody, uh, guys, good job as always. Um, we have got the Christmas holidays here now coming up before us. So I want everybody to please be safe. Uh, hopefully Santa brings you all these nice little gifts and goodies. I got something in the mail, but I'm going to open up and see what it is. Um, and, is it uh, mail? No, it's for Amazon. So I think I think it's one of my wife's presents. So hopefully she didn't open it up. So she didn't. So because um, I was typical buying everything at the last minute. Um, but uh, we will not be streaming any. So we're quiet the rest of the week. We will be back here next Tuesday to finish out the year of 2020, um, maybe with a little bit of a bang, and that will be it for streaming for the year. Then we kick back off. Next year, um, basically, um, the fifth will be our game here. And then I think Jeff will bring back up Yawning Portal on the seventh. And then um, the eighth, we will start a four-week stint of streaming over on Free League Publishing's game as the Friday Dingling Group is going to play uh, Chariots of the Gods on Free Leagues. So we're going to play the Alien RPG over there. We'll host it probably here. But uh, we'll give them some love and spend a month over there uh, streaming on the channel uh, on Friday nights. We'll still have our Saturday night games here with the ladies. And then starting in February, after we're done with the Free League, Mandy's going to come on Friday nights and run the group and a couple others through Tomb of Annihilation. While I am setting up more stuff for the Dinglings and other programming. We've got... Uh, um, Lone Wolf and Eric, a couple of people are going to be streaming and running uh, some off shows on the YouTube channel starting uh, first of the year. Uh, Dragons of Icebear Peak and East Texas University, a savage world. Uh, we're going to bring that, spin that back up over on YouTube starting the first of next year. And then uh, then we've got uh, Greyhawk Con coming up um in in february i got to he just sent the date i've forgotten it but i believe it's february um we'll be streaming uh a game on um, friday at 11 a.m on the channel it's a big uh all weekend um charity event that lord gasumba puts on and we got to be a part of it last year and so we're seven or eight channels are going to be involved and it's going to involve uh the underdark uh, and so I've got a quick four-hour session that I'll post some stuff up later for players. Probably we'll open it up to subscribers first and then for regular people afterwards. Um, but we'll be doing that, uh, which then will lead us in to January the 30th. will be Lori Peccia's, uh Critical Failures. Saturday the uh, 30th will be a 30-person game, 30 is what we're going to do, 40-person, no, 40-person game here on the channel. Saturday night, uh, it will be involve her, we've got a simple character sheet, it's a very high uh, RP, some dice rolling, uh, mainly a lot of mayhem and ability to have some adult drinks, and we're going to have uh, some giveaways, we've got stuff coming in from Total Party Kill Games, uh, I'm donating a few things, Jeff's donating, we're going to have several donations across the board. Uh, I've asked Matt over at Free League if there would be anything that they we probably could get our hot hands on from Free League over there to give away. And so it's a night of giveaways and of just chaos. I've done this before with Lori uh, for Gen Con last year, helped her stream it. It is a lot of fun, but it is a lot of stuff uh, that uh, with 40 people in a big Zoom call and her managing all of this as a DM. It's quite funny uh, and a lot of fun to watch. So we're going to have that on the channel. She's thinking about running that uh, every quarter here on the channel. And then we're ramping her up because she's also going to help out as we take over Gary Con at the end of March. Uh, Matt and I are in charge of the con. Uh, and we will have basically four channels of streaming goodness taking place over the whole weekend with one channel streaming for almost right under 72 hours straight. 
So I got a lot of work in front of me and we're going to have uh, all different sorts of content flying across the channels from Hollywood all the way to Greyhawk to Adventure League. Um, and so busy, busy, busy once we get into the first of next year. So the channel's going through some changes and I have got several other new initiatives in front of me that's been, uh, been put in, that I'm grabbing a hold of. The Luke has put in front of us and are helping him out with his convention for Gary Khan. So with that being said, Enough of my rambling. Gentlemen, uh, be safe. Uh, have a good Christmas. Enjoy your holidays. Uh, but we, unless something comes up, let me know. But if not, then we will reconvene here next Tuesday again to continue on. And everybody else that's here, y'all be safe. Have a good Christmas. Take care. We'll see you later. Son of a bitch, 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 didn't you? <laughs>